Right, what's up, guys? Welcome to Chemistry Class with Flash Isaac. Today, we shall be discussing an interesting topic. Trust me, we are going to enjoy it. All right. Separation of mixtures and purification of chemical substances. Wow. So according to your germ syllabus, this is the first thing you should know. You should know how to separate mixtures and how to purify chemical substances. All right. From the topic, major keyword there is mixtures and chemical substances. Now, what is a mixture and what are substances? Now, to separate mixture, it simply implies that mixture is a combination of something, okay? But what's that? Now, the chemical substances, purification of chemical substances, it means some chemical substances can be impure, right? So we can actually purify them. Okay, let's see to that. So under separation of mixtures and purification of chemical substances, you are expected to know the meaning of pure and impure substances, meaning of boiling and melting point, element, compound, and mixture, then chemical and physical changes. Seems nice, right? Okay, let's look at that. Now, what is a substance? It's simple. A substance is any form of matter that has definite composition and distinct property. Now, any form of matter? Of matter? Now, this definition brings some things to the table. Definite composition. Distinct <laughs> properties. So once again, I said a substance is any form of matter which has definite composition and distinct properties. Now, form of matter. So it means matter exists in different forms, right? But before we go into the forms of matter, let's discuss matter. What is matter? So matter in this case is not talking about discussion. <laughs> it's not talking about gossip, okay? So matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. That's matter for you. Now, anything that has mass and occupies space. Mass comes to mind. What is mass? Good. Mass is the quantity of Matter is substance as okay, quantity of substance or quantity of matter that's in the body or in an um, object. So, and we have to say matter is anything that has uh, mass and occupy space. So, if mass is a measure of quantity of matter a body possesses, then it simply means mass is the quantity or the volume of material that is in the substance. Okay, the volume of material in the body. For example, this is a board. So we have bigger boards, right? So those bigger boards they have bigger masses also. So that's what mass simply speaks about. And there's a big difference between mass and weight. Where mass is the quantity of matter a body possesses, weight is the earth pull on the body. So when the earth pull on the body, or when gravity acts, on a mass, it becomes weight. So weight is equal to mass times gravity. And acceleration due to gravity on Earth is approximately 10 meter per second square. So in this case, we may be asked, given a body of mass 10 kg, calculate its weight. Take G equals 10 meter per second square. So from here, we can solve mass equals 2 kg. Therefore, the weight of the body equals 2 times 10. 
which is 20. This is kg, this meter per second square. So kilogram meter per second square or Newton. So in this case, you solve problem. So you'll be sure that in your exam, you see up to two or three of such questions. And that's a lot of marks for you. And you, you may also be asked, the quantity of matter a body possesses is referred to as its dash A, mass, B, weight, okay? And other options. In fact, another question that can come from here is this. What is the unit of mass? So what are the units of mass? So mass can be in kg, kg kilogram, gram, pounds, and other units. So those are the options you get. So it's very easy for you to pick out the odd option. So I've been able to explain the meaning of matter. And let's go to forms of matter. Form of, form of matter means matter exists in different forms. So without wasting much time, water, matter exists in three states. So we have uh, the solid state, the liquid state, and the gases, uh, gaseous state. So matter can either be liquid, solid, or gas. Those are the states of matter. Okay, any form of matter with definite composition. So it means they have specific composition. So they are, they have uh, different uh, sub uh, consequence, but they are in definite composition. So and um, distinct properties. So the substances have properties that distinguish them from others. So when you see this substance, you know this, this substance and that's that. For example, water. When you see water and kerosene, you should be able to differentiate that okay, this water, this kerosene. So they have their definite composition and they have their distinct properties. For example, water is composed of hydrogen and oxygen. So the formula for water is H2O. So hope I've been able to explain what a substance is. Now, another thing you see, a substance can be pure or impure. So matter, this matter, divided into pure substances and impure substances. So an imp impure substance is referred to as <laughs> mixture. So whenever you see an impure substance, don't fail to add mixture. Impure substances are mixtures. Why pure substances are elements and compound. So this brings us here. So I've explained this. Explained it. It's into element and compound. Then mixture. So what is an element? What is a compound? And what differentiates a compound from mixture? So let me explain. An element is a substance. Okay? Substance that I've been explaining. Which cannot be split. It cannot be broken down into simpler form by an ordinary chemical reaction. You can't break it down. So it's just, it's, it's cool on its own, okay? And it's happy the way it is. So don't disturb it. That is element. An example of element is zinc, hydrogen, okay? And oxygen, aluminum, name them. See, they are elements, okay? So why compound? are substances that contain two or more elements chemically combined two or more elements chemically so compounds contain two or more elements that are chemically combined so, for example, if I should give hydrogen chloride, this A, remember uh, chlorine is an element. So, when you see something like this, so now let's separate, you see, hydrogen, okay, chlorine. 
So they both join together by a chemical reaction. H to give us this C N also. This is that is this in this and chlorine CF2. But in essence, most hydrogen reacts with chlorine to form HCl, which is hydrogen chloride. So a compound is formed. In this case, two elements have been chemically combined. Now let's see something like this. H2SO4. You get it. So this hydrogen, this sulfur, and this oxygen. So these are more than two elements chemically combined. So they form compound. Okay? Now let's go to mixtures. Mixtures is a substance. A mixture is a substance which contains two or more elements physically combined. So they are not combined by any chemical reaction. It's physical. For instance, I'm drinking water. Behold, you come, pour sand inside the water. So there is no reaction. It's physically combined because each of the constituents of the substance retain its property. Okay? So mixture is simply the combination of two or more substances whereby each of the substance retain their property. So you pour sand inside uh, water. The water is still there, the sand is still there, so their property is being retained, nothing has changed. But in compound, sodium chloride, which is common salt, so once you separate them, once they are, when they are combined, so the, pro the overall property changes, so they don't retain their individual property. So that's another difference between compound and mixture. So mixtures can be easily separated also. So example of mixture is sea water. The other example of mixture is bronze. Bronze is a mixture of copper and tin. While brass is copper, copper and zinc. Another major mixture you should know is air. You know, air is a mixture. Good. So, air is a mixture of nitrogen, there is oxygen, we have dust, we have vapor, water vapor. So, we have um, carbon dioxide, CO2. CO2. And in different percentage, okay. So air uh, is made up of 78 percent nitrogen, 21 percent oxygen, 0.03 percent carbon dioxide, and others. So that's air for you, the air you breathe. Once again, another example of mixture is air. So air is a bit of nitrogen, oxygen, CO2, dust, and water vapor, whereby each of them retain their property. So when you breathe in some air, it's called that the air is being polluted. So those things, they are mixture. So there is dust in air, CO2 0.03%, oxygen 21%, and nitrogen 78%. So I think I've been able to explain element compound and mixtures pure and impure substances. Now let's look at boiling point and melting point. So I told you that matter exists as solid, liquid, gas. So solid are substances that have definite shape. So they have definite shape and they are They are the, for the attraction of the molecule between them is very strong. So the force of attraction between them is very strong. That's why it's very hard for you to pull them. So your hand can't really go through here, through the body. But the force of attraction is very strong. Then liquids, they have definite volume, but they don't have shape. So if you have to fold my hand now and pour water into it, so the water will take the shape of this space. Also, calm water. 
when you feel what into the can, water takes the shape of the can. Even when you press the can, the shape still remains intact. So they have volume, but they don't have definite shape. Why gases they don't have definite volume, they don't have definite um, shape. So they are, and they also have random motion. So the motion of gas is random. Hope that's sticking. Good. So gases can be compressed. So boiling, liquids boil. Boiling is the property of liquid. So it's a uh, process whereby, it, or it's the temperature at which liquid changes to vapor. So that is state of matter. So solid can change to liquid, liquid can change to gas. So those are the states of matter. For example, let's take water. Water. So I'm using water to explain the change of states, how matter changes from one state to another. Water. So when you put water in your freezer, turn it on. So after some time, it blocks. It becomes solid. So it has changed from uh, liquid to solid. So in that case, we say it has frozen. So change from liquid to solid is called freezing. Then, now, solids can also change to liquid. For example, bring out your ice from the freezer, drop it on your table. So before you know, it changes to liquid. So and what has happened? It has melted. So this is called melting. Okay. Also, from liquid to gas. Water in liquid in liquid state can be changed to gas. For example, boil your put your water in the kettle. As it boils, you see it begins to form water vapor. So the changes begin to take place. So before you know, it has changed from liquid to gas. So now what has happened? So it has vaporized. It has vaporized. So it, it has boiled. So when water boiled, so it vaporizes. So it changes from liquid to gas. Okay? And also, solid can change to gas directly without passing through this state. So the process is called sublimation. Oh, that was taken. Then another one is this. Gas can change to liquid. That's what we call co condensation. So, for example, when, like, goes close to a boiling water, then put your hand on the vapor. Then remove your hand. Then check. Before you know, the vapor will begin to condense and change to liquid. So that's condensation. So these are the major ones. So our point of focus here is boiling and melting. So water boils, then change to gas. So at that stage,